It has been over a month since four University of Idaho students were found dead in that off-campus home in Moscow, Idaho. Police are still looking for a suspect, a murder weapon, and a motive. Uh, and that is where we find Fox News multimedia reporter Jake Carolex is standing by outside the headquarters of the Moscow Police Department with more. Jake, what are we learning tonight? Thanks for being with us. Andrew, good evening, good to see you. Well, about an hour and a half ago, Fox News Digital reporting that detectives have obtained eight hours of security footage from a gas station here in Moscow. And the biggest thing to take out of that is that they saw a white sedan passing by the gas station early in the morning, uh, the night of those four murders. And that's relevant because over the last few days, police have been asking the public's help for any information on a white 2011 to 2013 Hyundai Elantra. Uh, that car was spotted near the scene of the crime on the night of those four murders. Police believe that uh, whoever was in that Elantra could have critical information related to this case. And uh, the Moscow Police Department uh, has been combing through hours of surveillance footage, hasn't resulted in any leads yet, but police are saying that even though they don't have a suspect, tips are coming into the department, and this is not a cold case. Well, this investigation is not cold. We get dozens and dozens of tips. Uh, we sort through them, we prioritize them, and for sure, some of them are not, are not good tips. They're not even relevant to the case. But every single day, we get a good amount of viable tips. Andrew, the county coroner here, told Fox News that investigators put paper bags over the victim's hands at the scene to preserve DNA evidence. Forensics experts say the victims could have the killer's hair or skin on their hands underneath their fingernails if they touched the killer trying to defend themselves. Andrew? Okay, so Jake, are police responding yet uh, to this, uh, you know, piece of evidence, uh, video and photos that Fox News Digital has obtained? Uh, have they made any comment about it? Do they know it exists? Andrew, I haven't seen anything since the report came out about an hour and a half ago on if police have made any comments or if they are aware of this piece of evidence. It's our digital team reporting here on the ground. So uh, we'll keep you, guys, keep you guys updated on what we know as soon as we know what they know. Okay, and Jake, also give us a sense. You've been there uh, for a couple days now. Uh, what's the feeling like on campus now? Uh, a month removed, uh, are, are a lot of students out and about? That was what we had heard early on, that a lot of students did not want to come back from the Thanksgiving holiday because they were you know, afraid. Police have indicated as much uh, that they don't believe uh, you know, this poses a threat, a wider threat to the public there, but they want students, faculty, and other people who live there to remain vigilant and cautious. Do you get that sense still? Well, Andrew, I was on campus this morning, talked to several students, how they're feeling about the investigation. It's been over a month. Uh, this is actually the last week of classes here before holiday break starts. And most of them said that they felt safe, uh, they felt secure. They are planning on coming back after winter break as well for the next semester, barring anything crazy happening in this case. There was one student I talked to who said that some of her friends will not be coming back next semester, but everyone I talked to on the ground uh, said that they are feeling safe. Um, again, about over a uh, little over a month removed from this incident. Okay, and Jake, just lastly, you've been outside the police headquarters. Uh, have you noticed you know, any activity, people coming and going, any police officials? Still a lot of media around there? Andrew, been here for about half an hour. Uh, it's been pretty quiet here so far. A couple people trickling in and out of the department, but nothing really noteworthy in terms of you know, police cars coming or going or, or anything abnormal happening. All right, Jake Carolex is there live for us uh, in Moscow, Idaho, with the latest on this story. And so many are hoping for a break in this case. Jake, thanks so much. We'll talk again. Okay, uh, in the meantime, we do want to uh, let you see some of those new photos uh, and videos uh, obtained by Fox News Digital. Uh, and of course, we're going to put them up here uh, on the screen. Uh, okay, more from the investigation now into those slain University of Idaho students. Those images you just saw at the top of Jake's report were obtained exclusively by Fox News Digital. The cell phone photo of a computer screen showing a white car on a highway in Moscow, Idaho. 
The clerk who reviewed the security footage said it drove by around 3.45 in the morning. There you see the photo of the timestamp. You did just see that. Detectives collected eight hours of surveillance video from this gas station. An overnight manager told Fox News Digital that she had been reviewing the tapes over the past few days during her graveyard shift. She says she saw a white sedan driving by real quick at 3.45 in the morning. That's around the same time the four students were killed. The manager said once she saw the car on the tape, she took a photo and sent it to police. Detectives arrived around 11 a.m. this morning to collect the surveillance video. Fox News Digital asked them while they were leaving if they found anything significant. Uh, one of them responded, not yet. Just last week, police, remember, said they are looking to speak with the occupants of a 2011 to 2013 Hyundai Elantra, who may have critical information on the slains of Madison Mogan, Ethan Chapin, Zena Kernodal, and Kaylee Goncalves. Uh, so, and there you can see the timestamp there. Uh, so this is uh, breaking as we speak. Uh, this is... Uh, with a story in a case that has not had many major developments, I would say this is quite significant at the moment. There you can see that video obtained by Fox News Digital detectives going into that gas station collecting eight hours of surveillance video. And so that overnight manager had been reviewing the tapes over the past few days on her graveyard ship, uh, shift. We know, uh, according to police there in Moscow, a lot of uh, online and amateur uh, sleuths have taken up this cause. Uh, no doubt they have been somewhat irritated and annoyed by that development in this, uh, but no doubt the wider public is invested uh, in trying to bring someone to justice and trying to find a piece of information that will help law enforcement as we are now one month removed since those very vicious slains. Okay, uh, in the meantime, we do want to play out an interview now uh, that we had. Live Now's own Andy Max spoke with uh, the family attorney of the Goncalveses uh, as they want answers, as they are still mourning the loss uh, of the death of their daughter Kaylee in this slain. Let's hear what the lawyer had to say uh, in this interview. We're back here on Live and Now from Fox. I am Andy Mack and certainly still watching a story that has captivated a lot of the nation over the last month plus. We're now joined by Shannon Gray, an attorney for Kaylee Gonsalves, this family. Thank you so much for joining us here. And uh, the latest developments, what, what are you kind of talking with the family about? And, and uh, kind of just what are, what are we looking at right now, a month after this tragedy? Well, on Monday, we had a meeting with the investigators, the prosecutor, uh, Chief Fry, um, everyone that's kind of involved in the investigation and the family and myself met with them and um, wanted to kind of connect with them about a few issues. Um, we had a lot of questions that we wanted answered. Most of them didn't get answered because they're keeping, you know, most of the investigation pretty uh, close to the vest. Um, but we did want to cover a couple of things. You know, the first thing was accountability. Um, there have been a lot of inconsistent statements put out by Chief Fry, Bill Thompson, Kathy Mabbitt, Art Betke, the mayor. Um, and those inconsistencies, you know, kind of um, didn't uh, promote confidence in the investigation. Um, because, you know, if you are have one rooster that's basically speaking and, 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 telling the correct information instead of four or five people speaking and giving interviews. Um, it can be much more of a consistent message. And so we wanted to let them know that uh, we'd like to see, you know, some more accountability when it comes to communication with the public um, and accountability regarding, you know, um, them managing their side of the investigation a little better. Uh, the second part of it was communication, um, communication with the families, the victims' families. Um, and making sure that that has, uh, they do a better job of it. Uh, they haven't done a very good job of, of communicating with the families. Um, it's been kind of inconsistent. We've been reaching out to them, a lot of that stuff. And I wanted to make it very clear to them that our expectations were the investigations, number one, obviously. Number two is the victims' families. And the third is the media um, and the general public. Um, you know, the idea that the families might hear about some new information uh, on a news release was unacceptable. We needed to hear about it first, prepare for anything that might come down the road regarding that, 
and move forward uh, in that um, in that direction. So it is, and there's a lot of information we don't know. And like you said, police are keeping a lot of this information close as the investigation continues. How much does the families know, and how much does the Gonzalez family know about what happened uh, on that night? Well, you know, there's been a lot of uh, information that's been put out by the different parties. Um, you know, Bill Thompson made some statements that about the targeting aspect of it that, you know, Chief Fry walked back on. Um, Kathy Mabbitt, the coroner on the case, um, has made a lot of statements, a lot of interviews, has spoken with different victims' families. Um, Art Betke, obviously, from the get-go, uh, the mayor of, of Moscow, made the statement about crime of passion. So, you know, we we went in wanting to clarify a lot of that information. We wanted to, uh, we had, I had five pages of questions <laughs> um, that, uh, you know, we were looking for. Um, they wouldn't give us much information, if any, on most of the stuff. Um, but, uh, you know, we we hope, we're hopeful that, you know, the thing that we, we wanted to, uh, to do is that leaving that uh, meeting, uh, the police asked us to, you know, for the platform that we're using, giving some interviews, is to really focus on um, information regarding the 2011-2013 Hyundai white vehicle and, you know, the tip line being 208-883-7180 um, and getting information on that and putting that out to the public. Um, they think that's an important piece of evidence regarding uh, who might have been in the car, what they might have seen, things like that. Um, and the fact that the tip line itself has been turned over to the FBI. So you, you'll you have to be patient uh, in your tips. Uh, there might be a prompting that you may have to go through. It may be a 15 minute or so phone call uh, in order to get the tip in. Um, but uh, for us to you know put that forward and, and make sure that uh, people were aware of that and that's a piece of evidence that they're they're really looking for so and over the last just week or so the, the tip line has been open and you mentioned the car as well that that white stock photo that they sent out and they post on their facebook page about all the information and sort of tips uh but we really haven't heard a ton from police as the media and, and obviously we're a low priority here on the scheme of things but is there more communication? Is there a daily communication between the police and the families? Well, that's part of it. I mean, there's a lot of questions that we asked during the um, the meeting on why they are keeping certain information from the public, why they're not using the community more, uh, and trying to find a um, a suspect or a person of interest in the case. Uh, these are all investigative decisions that they're making, and uh, you know we're going to hold them accountable for all of those decisions that they make and we are you know the one thing that people are very you know we are supporting we support the police we support the investigation we support everything about the people that are helping uh the investigation but you also have to hold people accountable for the decisions that they make and hold people accountable in every job i'm held accountable for the things that i do um everyone is so you can be pro-police pro-investigation all of those things and support everyone that's involved, uh, but still hold them to a level of accountability. And so, you know, as part of the communication with the family, that's part of the thing that we wanted to clarify. We wanted to make sure there's daily uh, check-ins with the family, um, daily updates. If the family has a concern, let's say they hear, a, they see a somebody posted some video online, uh, you know, and they're concerned about that. and we direct that directly to the police department and they need to respond immediately. And the reason they need to is because um, maybe them getting back to us and saying, hey, that's just a bunch of fluff and it's there's nothing that's there, there with that piece of evidence. It allows the family to sleep better at night. It allows them to, you know, to to move on with things and and check that box and 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 do those things. So we wanted to make sure that they were aware of of that um, as well. And, you know, one thing I've been saying all along kind of hand in hand with that is that there are a lot of people out there that are trying to get their 15 minutes of fame um, and coming up with ideas and, and theories and things like that, um, uh, especially, you know, ones that are directed towards the families, any of the families. Um, number one, there needs to be a lot of grace um, and kindness that's uh, put towards the families. 
And this is a tragedy for them. It's a new story for a lot of people, but it's a life tragedy for this family and for all the victims' families. And so, you know, a, a father or a daughter or someone making a statement and then them running with that statement and and um, and doing different things um, and twisting it in a way. This is this is these are people that have lost a, a sister, a brother, a daughter, and uh, people need to you know be aware of that and and just be kind. And the, the reality of it is that the media shouldn't give those people platforms to speak. They're vile. And so the media starts needs to hold themselves accountable for that as well. If you are putting things out there and, and allowing someone to have a platform that's a supposed expert on the case, then you need to um, um, really think about what you're doing So and what good it's doing. And it's not good it's doing for the, for the broadcast, what good it's doing for the investigation for the families that are directly affected and will be affected for the rest of their lives. It definitely is a very traumatic moment for uh, the four families, but also the entire community in there in Idaho, Moscow, certainly a small, close-knit community, the University of Idaho, the student body uh, as a whole. But uh, amongst the victim families, obviously you represent Kaylee Gonsalves and, and that family. Is there any communication amongst the families? Because we've seen different members of families speak out recently, and obviously as this investigation continues on, they're searching for answers. They want a little bit of peace of mind. How much communication is there amongst the families of these four tragic victims? Well, I mean, I, uh, in, in our situation, um, you know, Maddie's family was very close with Kaylee's family. So they're in constant communication with each other. I do think that that's been a uh, a little bit of a um, how would I want to put it a uh, um, some damage control that has to you know when you have an investigation and you put out the word targeting and you have sons and daughters that were there um, and uh, you don't know who the target supposedly is or if it's a targeted house or what if it's even targeted at all. Uh, based on the 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 information that's been released, that the families start kind of pointing fingers at each other, like, oh, well, maybe I, you know, um, they were targeting them, and and why were they targeting them in some way? So I don't think it really helped bring the families together at all. It kind of pushed them apart because they didn't know anything about the investigation. And so you know, you would think in a situation like this that uh, all the families would be together, um, and and um, you know, uh, Kaylee and, and Maddie's families are very close, but I, I, we haven't had much contact with some of the other families, but um, I've, you know, I've only been on it for about a week or so. So uh, the history of the contact with the families, I'm not really sure on uh, as far as how long or what type of communications they've had. So. Correct. Yeah, I just I wanted to ask that question. And I think the most recent development we've seen, obviously, the police putting out the car, but we also saw some of the possessions of these victims being removed from the house. How important was that to the Gonsalves family to maybe get some possessions out of a potential crime scene and get it back to them? Well, I mean, it's, you know, you can look at it two ways. It's, it's I mean, I think it was a big deal by the police, but... I'm not sure it was such a big deal to the victims of the families. You know, this these are belongings that um, were involved in a murder or surrounded a murder. And, you know, you sometimes you have different emotions with that. Sometimes you want to cling on to those belongings, and sometimes you just want to push them away and never see them again, um, depending on if they bring up memories of those things. So um, is it good that they return the items? Yes, it's great. Um, but I'm not sure it's something to, that I would hang my hat on as far as, a, um, you know, that's, that's, they've done great. So. All right. Uh, and my final question to you is, as we continue on, it's been a month since that tragic November 13th, uh, early morning hours. Uh, what does, what do what do you do from here? What does the Gonsalves family do? Do they continue to support police and and hope for answers, or, or are there other uh, things that can happen? What what does uh, it look like moving forward from here? Well, they've they've always supported the police. They support the investigation. Um, they are hopeful and optimistic as they should be um, in these cases, and they're hoping that the decisions that are made by the investigators. Um, are going to eventually find the person who committed these crimes. And so, um, you know, moving forward, um, 
they're just supportive of the police and supportive of the things that they're doing. Um, and they're hopeful that there'll be some answers. Um, you know, I don't know what the time frame is on that, but hopefully there'll be some answers in the future. And and um, just, you know, still just being involved in the investigation as much as we can, so. And I think a lot of people are looking for the answers. Uh, what is what is the maybe the message that the Gonsalves family is, is speaking to police? Well, like, you know, the, the, I mentioned earlier, our first is accountability. We want to make sure that the police are doing the things that they need to do um, and they're making the right judgment calls about certain things. Uh, we had a lengthy meeting with them on Monday and um, didn't get a lot of the answers that we wanted uh, because they're they, they are keeping it close um, to them, all the details in the investigation. Um, we pointed out a lot of in, uh, inconsistencies that we thought have been uh, put out to, to the public um, and different things. We mentioned some other things to them. Um, and then, you know, the communication uh, with the families. We wanted them uh, to really uh, make sure that that was a priority for the police department, not just our family, the, but the entire, all of the victims' families. And so, um, and then, you know, the police uh, are the police car, the car that they're looking for, the white Hyundai, uh, making sure that people are very aware of that. And then my last was just the, you know, the media holding people accountable for um, um, people that uh, that probably shouldn't be speaking about things um, and uh, offer some kindness and some grace towards all of the families. So, yes, all of the families. Uh, thank you so much, especially as we're heading into the holiday season. Certainly a hard time for a lot of the people. Uh, Shannon Gray there, the attorney for Kaylee Gonzalez his family. Thank you so much for joining us here on Live Now from Fox. We appreciate the insight and hope we have answers soon.